The Junkyard Dog is a fantastic streamer pattern, created by renowned fly tire Mike Schmidt. I have made a few changes to the original to add weight, and I also like to use stinger hooks for the front and back, but these are personal preferences. I've included a link in the description to Mike's blog where you can see the original fly if you'd like. What makes this fly so great is the amount of motion it has in the water and the large profile that it creates while still being quite easy to cast. Begin the rear half of the fly by laying down a thread base. If you choose to add lead wire for weight, then wrap through the lead and create a thread dam on either side of it. End your thread at the point where the hook starts to bend. Measure a piece of marabou, roughly one and a half times the length of the shank, then tie it in at the point where you left your thread to create the tail. Once the marabou is held in place by the thread, cut it a couple of eye lengths shorter than the shank, and use your thread to secure it, ending your thread at the base of the tail. Tie in a piece of polar chenille and wrap it forward to where you ended the marabou, then tie it off with a few wraps of thread. Now form a collar out of marabou. To do this, take a piece of marabou that has lots of fibers down the stem like this one. Cut the tip to form a triangle shaped anchor and tie this in just behind the eye. Wrap the marabou around the hook to form the collar. Depending on the marabou, this usually takes between two and four wraps. Tie off the marabou and cut off the excess. Take a few wraps to secure the marabou. However, don't worry about cleaning it up too much as this is going to be buried by lots of material. The last step for this half of the fly is to form a wing out of fox hair. Tie in a clump of fox facing forward and after taking several wraps to secure it, fold the fox back and take several more wraps until it stays folded backwards. The original fly uses arctic fox, but sometimes this can be difficult to acquire. So here I am using temple fox, which is a close substitute and if you need to, craft fur will work, however it doesn't have quite the same effect in the water. Whip finish in front of the fox and cut your thread. I like to add flexmen at this point to keep everything secure. Place the front hook in your vise. If you have a rotary vise, you can turn the hook upside down. I find it easier to place the dumbbell eyes this way. Start the thread just behind the eye of the hook, and if you choose to add lead, leave it out of the way until you get the eyes secure. Place a pair of dumbbell eyes a little more than an eye length from the front of the hook. Tie in the eyes by placing X wraps over the center of the dumbbell. After placing lots of wraps, I like to further anchor the eyes with some super glue. This really helps to prevent the eyes from spinning around the hook when we're done. Now take several more X wraps, then switch it up by going up and over each side of the dumbbell. Finally, wrap the thread around horizontally, going in between the eyes and the hook. Using all three of these methods will help secure the eyes the best without them spinning around, and this last step really helps tighten everything up. And once the super glue has dried, those eyes aren't going anywhere. Turn your hook right side up and create a thread base just like you did on the rear hook. However, this time, go a little ways down the bend. Use laminated beading wire to articulate the fly. Take several inches of wire and tie it to the bend of the hook at about the halfway point on the wire. Add two beads and a rear hook to the wire, and after feeding it back through the two beads again, pull the wire until the rear hook is just behind the beads. Now take lots of wraps to secure both ends of the wire at the bend. Laying down a base of super glue over the rest of the shank will ensure that the wires don't slide loose. Lay the wires into the glue and take several wraps forward to the front of the eyes, then fold the wires back and cut off any excess. Cover up any excess glue with thread so it doesn't stick to any of the materials that we are going to tie in later.
Using the same technique as we did to form the collar on the rear fly, tie in two pieces of marabou. Wrap them around the hook several times to create a fluffy tail. Preen the fibers back between each wrap to avoid trapping too many fibers. Tie off the marabou and cut off the excess. Secure the butt ends and use a brush or velcro to untangle the marabou fibers. Take a few more wraps of thread to coax the marabou to lay backwards. A technique called hollow tying is used to create the large profile of the fly. Tie in a lighter clump of fox hair, facing forward as before. However, this time, use your finger to help the fox to spin around the hook. Once you have an even collar, pull the fox back and move your thread to be in front of the hair. Build up a small thread dam in front of the fox so that it lays back but still poofs out. Repeat these same steps with a darker piece of fox hair to create some color variation. The head of the fly is made out of Senyo's laser dub. Pull the laser dub apart several times to align the fibers until they are mostly all laying the same direction. Take a good sized piece of dubbing and place it so that it is completely around the hook, then take several wraps around the dubbing to secure it. Once it is tightly in place, move your thread in front of the dubbing. Take another clump of dubbing and place it on top of the eyes, and secure it with your thread. Then repeat this step on the bottom. Finish up the head by surrounding the hook again and repeating the same step as with the first clump of dubbing. Whip finish in front of the head and cut your thread. Using a brush or velcro, tease out the fibers to fill out the head and leave the laser dub spiked out. Separate the fibers so a little bit faces back and the majority faces up. Come in with a pair of scissors and cut the dubbing at a taper. Repeat the same step on the bottom, then use your scissors to clean up the head so that the eyes are fully exposed and the head has a uniform shape. Avoid cutting the dubbing that is laying back creating the collar of the fly. When you are finished, you should end up with something that looks like this. While the junkyard dog is not the fastest fly to tie, it sure makes up for it by being deadly in the water. It deserves a place in everyone's streamer box, and it is also very productive in white, black, and olive. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing for more videos like it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to respond to all of them. Thanks for watching and tight lines.